Hi, I'm Mike, and welcome back to Our Wyoming Life, where today we're heading out into the field to take care of a cow with a pretty urgent medical issue, and we have to get her all the way back into the corrals to take care of her. Also coming up a little bit later, we're going to talk to everybody's favorite vet, Spencer Wolter, about grass turnout here on the ranch. It's all coming up. Stick around. ranch hand Jeff as we head out to take care of number 130. Uh, she's a nine-year-old cow and she does have a calf this year, uh, number four, a little heifer. But she has a medical ailment that's going to start causing her very serious problems uh, here within the next, well, could be any time now. So we've got to get her in and try to get, get it taken care of. But first, we have to find her and she's about as far away as you can get, at least here in the home pasture. As you can tell, we're running with one four-wheeler. Jeff is on the four-wheeler. I'm actually in the gator. We're short a four-wheeler right now. So that kind of throws another little kink into things, but hopefully uh, we can get her in. I don't want to bring the whole herd in if I can help it. I think that's just more of a pain in the butt than what it's worth. So we're going to start moving cows and hopefully, uh, like we've done in the past, we'll be able to just let cows drop behind us as we move her closer. It's about uh, two o'clock in the afternoon, so we've got a lot of daylight to get this done and there really isn't any big hurry. So we'll just kind of uh, take the day as it comes. Is she? Oh, there she is. is. That her? Let's go check her out. Nope, that's not her. And there's Bambi, still waiting for her to have her calf. I do have some good news though, 80 had her calf this morning. So we ended up uh, tagging her calf. She's somewhere out there. Hopefully uh, today we'll have a chance to, to stop by and see how that little calf is doing. Here is number 130. We just tracked her down. There's only two cows out here with white tags. So uh, relatively easy to figure this out. Here she is. And if you notice, if I can get her to hold still, we're gonna try to take a look at her face. See that big old lump on the side of her face and it's all kind of scarred up and icky and nasty. That is some sort of abscess. Whether it started, it doesn't look like it started on a tooth. It actually kind of looks like it's up in her uh, nasal cavity or her sinuses or something like that. Um, so we do definitely want to get this taken care of. And like I said, she does have a calf out here. Her calf is number four, which is right there, right next to her. So um, I don't know if I told Jeff that. Let's see if we can have a little conference with Jeff and see what we're going to do. Hi, Jeff. Oh. <laughs> so that's her, obviously. Yeah. Um, number four is her calf. So if that calf comes along, I guess that's fine too. Okay. Um, it actually wouldn't be bad if we got the calf in because then we could hold her and her calf in a stall and make sure that, you know, she heals and everything else. Yeah. Otherwise, we will just end up kicking them back out, but it would be nice if we got them both in, but it's totally not like a, a top priority. Okay. So if her calf wanders off, you know, we'll just concentrate on her. Got cool. It. Do you have a plan? Get behind her and follow. <laughs> follow and hopefully she knows where she's going because we don't always know. All right. Jeff's going to work on pushing her, and since we're using the gator today, it kind of does uh, throw a little bit of a wrinkle in, but we have radios, we can talk to each other, and we just need to move her about a mile that way. Come on, girly. feeling this is going to be kind of tricky.
animals by four-wheeler or even with the gator, uh, one of the tricks that I like to use is when they're going the direction we don't want them to go, we apply more pressure. Uh, when they're moving the direction we do want them to go, then we can let off the pressure a little bit. be tougher than we thought uh yeah um do you want to maybe we can put some cake in the back of the gator and try to lead them in we're going to bring a lot of them yeah but as long as you can keep an eye on her hi <laughs> how are you um as long as you can lot. keep an eye on her and keep her with us we can do that yep you want to try it better a lot than none right yeah are you cool with that idea <laughs> this is faith by the way hi faith she rode in the gator a long time ago when she was much smaller. All right, let's go back and get some cake and we'll uh, try again. Okay. And this is plan B, a little bit of cake thrown in there. We're gonna use food as a motivator at this point and hopefully all of the cows follow us in. But we'll see. First, we have to get their attention. Apparently it's too early in the spring for this stuff. Maybe too late, I don't know. Hey kids, come on, come and get it. Yeah, hi, hi, look what I got. Look what I got here. Look at all this good stuff, come on. Cows don't like moving for the gator and I think that's because they actually associate the gator with food. Um, so there's uh, you know, a conflict of interest kind of there so with our new game plan really all we have to do is move with the cows and Jeff's job and he's right back there his job is to make sure 130 is still with us as we take cows when we get them closer to home then we'll start separating everybody off and uh, hopefully it works a little bit better we're gonna avoid roads as much as possible because we're gonna actually do this in a straight line um, just to save steps for fuel for time for aggravation so number 130 is right there she's one of these four or five cows that are with us which is super awesome and the hope is she stays with us the whole way I'm kind of surprised that the cake thing works on her because with that uh, abscess or whatever it is, uh, you would think that she would be having trouble eating. And uh, apparently she's not if she's uh, this desperate for cake. Yeah, there she is right there. getting a whole lot closer uh, probably within about a half a mile or so of home so this seems to be working Jeff's still back there making sure everything keeps moving
like we went from the Fantastic Four down to the Three Amigos. It's even better. We're heading now into uh, where our bees are actually stored, our beekeeper. A uh, friend of ours named Tudor, who has all these bees, actually just brought these all in here and dropped them all off. Uh, they'll be distributed around the ranch and around other ranchers uh, here in northeast Wyoming to produce honey, uh, which you can purchase online or uh, in the farm store in person. So pretty cool making the honey. Hopefully Jeff doesn't get stung back there. Jeff, did you get stung? Nope. Uh-oh. Oh, we've got problems. All right, there she goes. Number 130 has decided to leave this, leave the area. We gotta go catch back up with her. We almost made it. Maybe it was the bees, who knows. together. And she has no interest in cake at this point. Well, crap. Okay. All right, so that, my friends, is a complete and utter failure. Uh, she turned around on Jeff, she took off. All right, Jeff, why don't you come up here by me if she's not gonna turn around, follow us. Well, did you get her turned around? Yeah, she's going back the other way. So she is done. We are actually gonna dump off this cake that we've got for the cows. We're gonna have to postpone this operation for a little bit later, but that's okay, because we've got a call with Dr. Spencer Walter. We're gonna be talking about grass turnout. Stick around. We're back with everybody's favorite vet. It's uh, Doc, Dr. Spencer uh, Walter and uh, with FBN. And there's a, a new Lunch and Learn coming out this week and it's all about grass turnout. First of all, you have to explain because some people get really confused about this, but what exactly is grass turnout and what does it mean? Yeah, absolutely. So um, it's, it's a time of year where we get to have usually cheaper feed costs. So we'll take our pears out um, and our cows and our bulls, put them out to some of the pasture grazing. And it's usually the start of breeding season for a lot of producers as well. So there's a lot of different things to think about, you know, about like our worming on our cows, vaccines going out, you know, disease challenges out at grass turnout um, on those pastures. And then also making sure our bulls are ready to make sure they're capable of breeding. Um, but grass turnout is usually a pretty fun time for some producers. So it's more than just one thing. It's it's a, it's basically, yeah. it's just a, a whole pile of stuff that, ha no, just like ranching or farming in any aspect, I mean, 9,000 things have to be done this weekend by three o'clock. Yes. Um, so yep. when it comes to grass turnout, what's What's the what's the top consideration? I think you know our, you you talked about timing and nutrition. Is that considered the top consideration when it comes time to uh, plan your grass turnout? 
Yeah. So, you know, honestly, it changes. So we have this whole checklist. So it really depends on each producer's operation. But one thing that I'd say, considering grass turnout, you know, depending where you are in the country today, you are either in a severe drought or you have a ton of rain, right? Almost too wet. (laughs) Up by me, we're getting like an inch or more a week. So our grass is growing like gangbusters. And then you go, you know, south of the like I-80 line in Nebraska and Iowa. And I mean, they maybe have had a 10 since the 1st of January. Right. So making sure your pastures can support whoever or whatever you're putting on them, right? So thinking how many acres you need. Um, in Missouri, they are up to 135 acres a pair because of how sparse the grass is. Wow. So just making sure you know what your, what your pasture um, can handle for your bears because the last thing you want to do while mom's trying to make milk for a calf and for them to cycle and breed back with a bull, you do not want to be short on nutrition. So making sure you understand how much uh, grass essentially is growing and can support your herd before you need to move them is uh, probably probably number one. But there's a list of like five things we like to go over. Um, one thing that a lot of people and we've talked about here on the channel here recently is grass tetany. And I've actually gotten the question a few times. How do you know when you're out of the danger of grass tetany? Yeah, so the answer is you never can be sure, right? Um, so that's why we use like those those high make tubs. Um, but it's essentially whenever you're giving in that frivolous like new growth, right? Once you start really having like seed out, like um, your grass seeds out on your grass, you know, you're de- you're definitely out of the danger zone. I always like to think any grass that is six inches and shorter is is when you're going to have that that highest risk factor. Um, so once it's over that, you know, it starts to get more stocky, especially when we start to seed head out, um, you know, you're in the safe zone, but never say never. Um, the reason I say that is last summer, we had some cases pop up in August, actually, because the pastures had completely died all summer because we got no rain. Mm-hmm. And we got a huge push of new growth, actually, um, in August, or August when we got all this moisture. So it usually is an early springtime, but, you know, if you have really bad drought and then a ton of rain, you know, you can see it at different times of the year. So something to always consider. That's interesting. That's interesting. So you have your beach, beef lunch and learn coming up uh, on Wednesday here, and people can sign up at fbn.com. Uh, we're going to put a link down in the description. What are some other topics that you guys are going to don't don't no spoilers? But what are some other topics that you guys are going to talk about this this week? Definitely, definitely. So at the like the like second to last slide is like our actual checklist. So I'll cover what the checklist is, and you guys are going to have to tune in to see how we dive into them. So one is pasture management and just a grazing plan. I think we've touched on that a little already. Um, and then choosing the right mineral supplement. Um, Got to dive into that because trace minerals can really be the pain in your back of why you're not having cows breed back. They're very crucial. So we'll get into that. Um, breeding and bull power, making sure you have enough bulls to make sure all of your females get pregnant. And then also what we need to be looking for in our bulls to make sure they're ready to be able to be out on grass. And then I, w- I wouldn't be a, a true vet lunch and learn if we didn't talk about managing disease risk, right? Anything from respiratory, pink eye, and those dirty clostridials that live in the dirt. So our high risk time is going out to pasture. Right. And then, you know, touching on nutrition as well, we have to talk about deworming, right? So pasture is the contaminating source, right? Um, and I'm not going to go into like the cycle of it yet. You got to tune in Wednesday. But um, deworming is something you definitely have to think about, especially as our cows are breeding back and still producing milk. So got to make sure she keeps all of her groceries. I almost feel like grass turnout could be multiple lunch and learns. There's just so much stuff that's, that's tied into it that it's got, it's got to be tough to try to say, Hey, we're going to take, we're going to do this in 45 minutes and we're going to try to get all this stuff in. No, you're spot on. So we have like um, our marketing team that goes through our slides and we just keep having to cut more out. So basically, this is just like an intro, even though we're diving in a little more than I just did. Honestly, it's just an intro and you need to reach out to either one of us or your local veterinarian because it's it's very complex and it's so producer dependent. Right. Especially like where in the state you are, you know, all sorts of stuff like that. Um So it's a very complex conversation. We just want to start to kind of get your guys' gears turning about it so you can have those uh, 
those conversations, right? Yeah, that makes sense. I know I'm going to be there. And for the very first time, you can actually get paid to attend a Beef Lunch and Learn. You can get a $25 yeah. coupon off on animal health if you spend $100. So basically, you can get paid to spend 45 minutes uh, with you. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So you're going to you're going to get some good little information, things to get your your gears turned, at least to start having some of those conversations with your neighbors over coffee or your veterinarian. And you still get paid for having to look at Erica and I for the 45 <laughs> minutes. So, oh, that's awesome. I don't I don't know yeah. if 25 bucks is enough, but, you know, it's a start. I know exactly. It's a, it's a start, but I know you all deserve way more for being stuck with us that long. <laughs> Thank you very much, Spencer. I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to it. Um, be sure to check out the description down below. Check the link. Get signed up, um, and then you actually afterwards, uh, even if you do sign up and you're not able to make it, uh, you will get a recording of the webinar as well, so you can go back and watch it on your own time. Uh, it's great information, and I don't think I've missed a single one so far, and they've only gotten better. So thank you very much for taking your time, Spencer to do these. I know they're a lot of work, but they do help out producers in the long run. Even like you said, even if it just gets the conversation going or your mind working and now you're thinking about things that you probably should have been thinking about or maybe you have, but they get pushed to the bottom of the list and you realize how important some of this stuff is. Right, right. And that's, you know, so that's the goal of the Beef Lunch Learn. A lot of these things you only think about once a year, right? And, you know, it doesn't matter the size of operation you're running. Your head is filled with all sorts of daily tasks. It's hard to bring these back. I mean, it's even kind of difficult for us vets sometimes, right? It's not always something on the forefront of the brain. So we're just trying to here to be a resource and then also put a little money in your pocket. So Awesome. FBN always helping out the uh, farmer and the rancher. Thank you, Spencer. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Later, bud. Bye. Bye. All righty, guys. I don't know if you could see that or not, but uh, a little text message or whatever from Jeff there. Sounds like he's got number 130 in, so we're going to head into the lot, see what he's got going on. Where is he at? He's already got her in. Super cool. Hey man, you did it. <laughs> yep. Can you get her pushed up in the corral? I can I? Yeah. I think so. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go around the other side, I'll meet you there. All right. Good job, Jeff. Now comes the hard part. So we know that she has an abscess on her face. Uh, we don't really know what is causing that abscess or what kind of abscess that it is. So at the very least, we're gonna end up giving her antibiotics. Uh, at the most, we may end up lancing it. We could actually even put in a drain if we had to. Good girl. Good girl. Again, Jeff saves the day. Uh, we are now sitting here with number 130 and her calf are now inside the tub. Where's her, her calf must be in front of her. She's right here, yeah. Um, why don't you bring the calf through first? We'll weigh the calf. We'll take a look and see how much weight it's gained or whoever wants to go first, I guess. Hi, mama. That looks like it hurts. Yeah, that looks like it hurts. Yeah, all right, come on. Are we cranky? Yep. Come on. Afraid she's gonna squish. Okay, she's going first, it looks like. Calf's behind her. Let's get her up in here. Come on, mama. We don't want her calf to go, but we'll keep her calf behind. You wanna ivermec her while she's here? Cause she's got some flies on her. There we go. All right, let's bring her up and in. 1,455 pounds. She's a big girl. She is. All right, you think you can do it? No. <laughs> if I was... Um, know, if you were six inches, inches taller? taller? Yeah, I get it. All right. 
Come on, girly. Put your head through there. Come on. Oh. Gotcha. All right, we're going to squeeze her down. We're going to give her the whole nine yards here. You're going to be able to get that. Go. Go. Oh, a little bit. No. no. You got her. You got her. Good job. All right. Okay. Let's just hold her there. We're going to give this number. We're going to do this number, too, just in case. She's not going to like us at all here, Jeff, in about two seconds. Oh, look at the pus coming out already. Wow. Yeah. Hi. Can you hold on to that for a second? Okay. Hey there, Mama. So let's take a look and see what we've got here to work with. Um, like we said, we are going to make sure that she gets an antibiotic. So we're using Exceed as an antibiotic. It's a four-day course, and it should get her taken care of. Um, we also have some lidocaine uh, for topical anesthetic. We have some needles so that we can start to drain this mess. Uh, we've got a syringe to help us do that. If that doesn't work, I do have a uh, razor knife, a really clean razor knife that we've sterilized and we'll be able to uh, hopefully make a small incision and help this thing drain as well. The antibiotic should take care of any infection that could, could be formed by that. But the nice thing is we got her and her calf here, which means that we can keep them in the corrals while she heals. You can see it's just oozing pus. Um, that's pretty gross. And can't feel very good, kiddo. Yeah. She's broken it open a few times. You can see we're scabbed over right there. We're scabbed over here. We're scabbed over here. Got a pretty good scar there as well. Okay, the other part of this that I forgot about um, is the betadine solution. This is an anti-bacterial uh, solution that'll keep everything hopefully as clean as we can keep it. So it's kind of like iodine, like a souped up version of iodine. The first thing we're gonna do Hi, is uh, an injection that's actually an antibiotic. This is Exceed. It's a four-day course. Should actually have her pretty well set up. This actually goes behind. Stop it. Stop it. No. This goes behind the ear right here. We're going to go vertically right in. Right in behind the ear. It all goes in. Actually, we should flash it back, make sure we didn't get any blood vessels. Close enough. You're fine. Now for the fun part. Yeah. So it is actually really hard. Is it? Yeah. There's a little bit of soft down here, but it actually really feels like bone. We can squeeze this out. Get some of that out of there. So we gave her the, uh, ooh, does that hurt? Oh yeah. So here is a big pocket of fluid. So I don't know if you can see that at all, but see this big round part here? The rest of this is all what we call woody. So it's already hardened. It's like almost like bone. Um, this will be her last year on the ranch, but we really don't want her to get infected or anything like that. So what we're going to probably do is actually just get rid of this. The rest of this is all solid. It's already solidified. It's all, it almost feels like bone. It's really weird. Okay. So we have lidocaine, which is, uh, this is actually, uh, we use it during epidurals or anything like that but we're going to actually be infusing it so it's a it's a lighter solution of, of lidocaine and it'll actually just numb the skin just like if you had if you were getting stitches or anything like that so so we're just going to slowly kind of give you some of this here okay it's okay i know that hurts ew 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 Good girl. Good girl. You're okay. 
Got a little bleeding going on, but that's okay. There you go. Okay. I know it sucks. All right, now we're gonna come in with a needle. This is a pretty big gauge needle, but we're gonna try to pierce this and see if we can get it to drain, which we may not. As long as she holds still, let me grab a syringe. And this is much better than having to uh, actually, oh, that didn't work, than actually having to cut it. <clears throat> Hold on, kid. You're okay. You're okay. Stop it. Oof. It's okay. So now she doesn't even feel that. But she can probably feel the suction. Now come up here and look at this. So I'm sucking that goo right out of there through this needle. All the pus, everything else. It may be too thick to actually run through this needle. So we may end up cutting just a little bit to try to lance this. You see some blood coming through there. gotta stop kiddo we're trying to help I know it sucks okay we're gonna cut it okay hold still girl there we go there we go now we're getting it so we're just gonna push all this out that's got to feel better huh Feels better, huh, girl? Yeah. Doesn't smell horrible, actually. Of course, it depends on which way the wind's blowing. You're okay. You're okay. We're almost done. We're almost done, girl. There we go. See? We're getting all that out of there. actually feel a pocket right behind it. Okay, she does have a small incision, but actually I don't think I'm gonna have to stitch that up. I think that will clean itself up. Hold on. Just get a little, see if any more comes out. Yeah, there's more. Bunch of pus in there. It's got to feel better though, huh, Ken? Doesn't that feel better? Hmm? Okay, and once again, due to the infiltr infiltration of the lidocaine, she's actually probably not feeling any of this. I think she's just more annoyed that we're messing with her face. But that's pretty much all we're going to get out of there. We don't have to put in a drain. I think it will continue to kind of ooze out uh, as we go. The rest of this, like I said, is all hard and bony. So it's not really anything we can do about it at this point, but we can keep this from moving up into her eye, which is actually my main concern. So we're gonna clean it up. You want some water? You want some water? <laughs> she wanted water, all right. And then some more of this, just to keep everything as clean. You don't want to drink this. Hey, you don't want to drink this. It's icky tasting. Yeah, see, it's icky. Okay, and she kind of cleaned off here. Put some of that right into the wound that we made. Okay, so. Ranch and Jeff, we did not make any friends today. No. <laughs> In fact, I'm pretty sure she hates us. Probably me more than you, but you know what? I'm gonna say it's all your fault. Yeah, it was your idea. <laughs> what do you say uh, we get her out of here and then we'll bring her calf in and weigh her and just kind of 
<clears throat> see how much weight her calf is gaining. We'll let her hang out on this side. Uh, we're gonna have to put a little bit of water out here for her, uh, but other than that, we'll be able to keep her close by. Okay. Make sense? Yep. We'll All right. Move. We'll do some tension. All right, we're gonna release her head, which will make her happy. And we'll let her out. And there she goes. Ready. Here comes her calf, backing up. And we'll just stop her calf there. Weighs 265 pounds. You should. Go get your mommy. Reunite. Here comes mom. All right, so she weighed 265 pounds. Um, we're gonna say she was of average weight when she was born. For a heifer, she's about 70 pounds. And I wanna see how old she is. So you got your calculator out? No. No? But I can. Awesome. She's number four, so she's not terribly old. No, she is two months old, so say 60 days. 265 pounds. Minus 70. Minus 70. Equals, divided by 60. Divided by 60 equals 32 and a half. So it'd be 3.25. I don't know how you ended up. You must have had a decimal in the wrong spot. I didn't put any decimals. <laughs> okay, let's do it together this time. 265 <laughs> minus 70, 70, 195. 195. Divided by 60. 60 3.25. There it is. Three and a quarter. 3.25 pounds per day, which is great for a young heifer to be gaining here on the ranch. So what'd you think of our whole lancing experience or whatever you want to call it? It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. It wasn't horrible. Kind of oozy, a little gross. Yeah, like, you know, pimple popper. Yeah, like the pimple popper. So hopefully this video does well. It probably will because there's, you know, it's disgusting stuff, things <laughs> squirting out of people or animals, not so much people. <laughs> uh, but uh, that comes tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you very much to uh, Dr. Spencer Walter for coming on today's show too, telling us about the FBN Grass Turnout Beef Lunch and Learn. I hope you guys can attend and you can actually make money doing it. There's a link down in the description to check that out. Tell your friends because it's going to be a lot of fun. Once again, thanks for joining us on our Wyoming Life.